So first of all, we need to basically answer, obviously, this question that what is temperature? And uh, temperature is, has basically two definitions. So it is the average kinetic energy of particles of a body. Okay. Then the other thing about this is that it is the degree of hotness or coldness. Oh. Yes. Hello, Javier. Hello, sir. Degree of hotness and coldness. of a body due to the root mean square speed of particles of that substance okay so this is basically from the ideal gases. You just need to remember it's basically the same thing we have done. Three by two kT. Okay. The other thing you you guys honestly, the other things you guys should remember is the temperature in degree uh, in kelvins is equal to temperature in degree Celsius plus two seventy three point one five. Okay. Yeah, then we got we need to know what is a triple point, okay? So triple point is a unique temperature at a specific pressure where all the three states of matter coexist okay, like that. Now, This is just for your own, you know, a little bit of information here. Oh, sir. Yes. Could you read? I uh, could you read out the uh, answer for what this triple point mean? It is a unique temperature at a specific pressure where all the three states of matter coexist. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Like solid, liquid, and gases, like that. Right so how is the RMS speed connected to the temperature? Like this, Kartika. Forgotten about the last chapter already. The mass of the particles will remain constant. Boltzmann constant will remain constant. Okay. Now, think, no. so you forgot about C1. You forgot about this? Now I remember. No, not Good. Now, next is the Kelvin scale. So when you basically are asked by a term, asked about a thermometric scale, okay? Thermodynamic. So, you guys should always remember that a thermodynamic scale is independent of any 
थर्मोमेट्रिक प्रॉपर्टी थर्मोमेट्रिक प्रॉपर्टी कुछ भी लाइक यू नो प्रेशर लेंथ एक्सेट्रा एंड इट मस्ट पास थ्रू टू पॉइंट नंबर वन एब्सोल्यूट जीरो कैलविन एब्सोल्यूट जीरो कैलविन मीन्स दैट एट दिस पॉइंट नो काइनेटिक एनर्जी और यूको रॉसफ्राइड मिनिमम काइनेटिक एनर्जी remains okay in the substance like things stop moving all particles and the other thing is the triple point of water you don't need to remember the values but triple point of water is 0.01 degrees celsius and at 0.61 kilopascals but you don't need to remember this okay just that two points in red okay hmm cool so now that my prize have ended finished so i'm going to list down some of the thermometric properties okay so first thermometric property is pressure so as the temperature thermodynamic temperature changes pressure can change and length and volume emf and what else resistance and what else i think um, light intensity so these things change with respect to temperature remember thermodynamic scale is an independent scale so it will change and the other things will change because of it it doesn't need any property to change or cause it to change all right like that like an independent variable yeah it is like an independent variable that's correct okay now <clears throat> you guys have written this should i go forward no sir give me a minute mm -hmm. this chapter i will talk more you guys will write more well that i do all the time but no. today is 8 february which means we are left with about one and a half month hmm. Hmm. one and a half month 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 chapters to go we can do that all right should i go forward around 80 days left how many around 80 days no no for this crash course what oh. okay. yes i need to you know do some past papers about 5 years that would be good all right should i go forward now yes sir okay unfortunately in this chapter there's a lot of road turning so you need to learn about the properties of these thermometers and obviously in the exam they might also ask you to write about them so first of all liquid in glass liquid in glass has a range of minus 10 degree to 110 it is the most common one it has low sensitivity i'm going to explain what sensitivity means in a bit 
it has low responsiveness and it it is easy to carry and it has low accuracy as well and it is linear so only about because this is linear that's the only good thing otherwise it is a very bad um, thermometer anyway so then thermal couple is the range has a minus 200 to 1750 and it has high sensitivity it got high responsiveness and it is difficult to carry also it has high accuracy and it is also linear so in other words if you ever want to decide they want they ask you about what is the best thermometer you can use in any situation that would be this one okay and the reason i i want to basically write this because there's a reason for this so about 80 percent of questions if they come from thermometers they will always ask you to pick this one so i guess you should be aware of that okay give me a second please while you write it down Okay. Okay. Now, then comes platinum resistance. In platinum resistance, you got um, range of minus 200 to 1000 degrees celsius it is of high sensitivity and it's moderately responsive which means it is like it takes a little bit of time but not as bad as you know mercury thermometer so it is quite easy to carry it's a very small one and it also has moderate accuracy and it's a non linear thermometer also these thermometers are generally used for small objects so you should remember that okay all right then you got constant pressure volume it has a range of 450 to 2250 degrees celsius low sensitivity it has a low responsiveness it is uh, non-linear but the good thing about this is that it has very high accuracy one of the best but because it is like it needs to set up filled with water or gas so it's difficult to carry actually you should remember that cumbersome thermometer. so range 450 or 480 450 sorry 450 to two two five zero.
Okay. All right, then we got infrared. Infrared is basically the range is around minus 60 degrees to 625 degrees Celsius. It has low sensitivity and it has moderate responsiveness. This is the same one that, you know, in COVID days, people used to use on us. It has very low accuracy. I think it is. it has the least accuracy amongst all of these. And it is very easy to carry. And obviously, this is a linear thermometer. Then you got thermistor. Thermistor has a range of minus 100 to 300 degrees Celsius. Then uh, it's basically non-linear. It is very responsive. It is. It has low accuracy. And it is easy to set up because you just need to connect it to a battery, that's all. And then it's uh, it has moderate sensitivity. And also this one is used for small objects. Okay, so in the exam, they might also ask you to use a, use a reasonable thermometer with the conditions given. And obviously you need to choose between these six. All right, when you've written it, please let me know, okay. All right, done. Uh, yes, uh, sir, can you go to thermocouple, please? I missed the last two points for a second. Okay. I'll just take a screenshot. Yes, please. Okay, carry on. Okay, now let's go forward. So the first thing is the definition of thermal equilibrium, okay? So generally this def def definition will be of two marks and sometimes one mark, but usually two marks. So the definition of thermocouple is for the first point, you should always write that two bodies are said to be in thermal equilibrium when object A is at the same temperature as object B. The other thing is so, no net heat flow occurs. That's what you should understand. Which means that if you're looking at, suppose, a body like this, and another body like this, So between these two bodies, if they're physically touching, 
like whatever heat is being flowing from A to B, the same amount of heat flows from B to A. Thus, they will stay in this thermal equilibrium. So heat is flowing, but if you basically find the net of how much heat has flowed to that and how much uh, to this, so the net will always be zero because they're always exchanging the same amount of heat. Is that clear? Now, obviously, the next question says, suggest a suitable type of thermometer, one in each case, okay? So, they want us to find something like, you know, uh, temperature of flame of Bunsen burner. Do you guys, which, which should I use? Bunsen burner would be quite hot, right? So then you have to go towards right the largest uh, range, right? So you can basically use a uh, constant volume and pressure one. You can also use thermocouple. And obviously you can also platinum use- Platinum resistance. Yes, very good. Yeah. Now you guys understand how to answer this. All right. So what about infrared? Infrared is not, I think Bunsen burner can go like some Bunsen burners can be very, very high. We could use that, but then, yeah, you could use that, but it's not very accurate. Okay. okay. Then the change in temperature of small crystal when it is exposed to uh, pulse of ultrasound. So first of all, basically change in temperature in a small crystals. The object is very, very small. And for that, basically, if you really want to use things for, I would recommend a thermistor, okay? Because thermistor is, uh, can basically give you small changes, all right, in temperature like nice thing is that clear you can also use thermocouple if you want to that's fine now i just want to uh, bring your attention towards this one and this is a very important thing because that i think i also already told you this before as well it says this is the temperature change state and appropriate number of decimal places change in kelvin so if you want to find change in Kelvin, you don't need to convert them. You can simply subtract them, okay? Because even if you convert once and then you subtract, you're gonna get the same answer always. What do you think this would be? Oh, it makes sense. Sorry? 11.5? No, I 11. got you what you tried to say. You didn't get what I had to say. No, sir, okay. I did get what you had to say. Okay, okay. So then this is Kelvin's. Now, the thing is generally um, what we see is that sometimes uh, our equation, the real equation is temperature in Kelvin is equal to temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273.15, all right? So it is actually somewhat, uh, say, close to uh, this value, right? So I would recommend that in appropriate decimal places, because it gives you at least two, but right now it says you just need to use this. So we can just write 11.5, but if there were two, then we would actually add 11.50 if they're sort of given as something like this or something, or maybe some other value. Is that clear? So make sure that you do remember this. Anyway, now it says convert the final temperature. So 273.15 plus 38.0. Can you please get me the answer to this?
Hmm. 311.15. 311.15. Okay, fine. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right, so uh, keeping that in mind, uh, currently we have to, this answer basically would not be correct. The reason is that this in the answer, the decimal places are like one. So it's better to now write it as uh, 311.2 like that. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, good. Now we're going to go towards the zeroth law of thermodynamics. And zeroth law is very simple. All you need to remember is that if the object A is in thermal equilibrium with object P and object P is in thermal equilibrium with object C, then object A and C are both in thermal equilibrium. Okay. All right. Now, what it means is that suppose you have one object. Uh oh. Suppose you have one object as A, and then you got another object as B. Just color it. And there's another object as C. So all these objects like A, B, and C, if A and B are basically in thermal equilibrium, then, and B and C are in thermal equilibrium, then A and C will also be in thermal equilibrium. This is what it means, okay? All right, the two conditions that must be there in order to or on our, in order to obey this law is number one, that the objects are in an isolated system. When I say isolated system, which means there are no ener unknown energy exchanges. And the other thing is that objects are in contact. So you can't just you know, put an unknown medium between them. All right, is that clear everyone? Any questions? All right. Okay, then should I go forward, please? Let me know when you're done writing this. Objects are is on isolated system. Oh, no. Objects are in. In Hi. an isolated system. I'm sorry. I'm actually very tired today. No, sorry. No, don't be. 
No, no, it's basically I played like one hour football with my school kids in America. It's all right. Sir, we play one hour football and we don't get tired. You don't get tired? No. Why? How? Okay, you're young, that's fine. Sir, uh, see, usually uh, out of eight periods, we have like a uh, few three periods, it's like around two, three periods, which are 40 minutes each. So we ask, uh -huh. like, since we have no, nothing else to do, we play football and basketball. Oh, okay. I play whenever I get time. On the day so when imagine I don't... playing. So imagine playing basketball, running from one hoop to another hoop, mm. and then playing football from one goal to another goal. Well, that's a big thing. Students' life is hard, sir. Teachers it's don't understand, hard. unfortunately. Not hard. It's easy. But never mind, you will understand soon, maybe in five years. Okay. Then, going to the next. Now we need to know these definitions, and these definitions will also be used in the next chapter. So, first of all, we should know about ice point. Ice point is a fixed. Temperature at which pure ice melts. Okay. Then steam point is a fixed temperature at which pure water boils. Okay. There is another word for this. Ice point is known as the lower fixed point. And steam point is also known as the upper fixed point. All right. So you can also know that. Then comes sensitivity. Sensitivity is basically the change in thermodynamic property per unit change in temperature. All right, so what I mean by sensitivity is, so, it's like human emotions, right? If some people, some people are sensitive and we call them sensitive because they sort of react to small things in a bigger way. Do you guys understand this? Like they can make a great fuss about small things, okay? So if a thermometer basically is zero degrees right now. And then when in one degree, it shows a length of this much, and that's when it changes to uh, one degree, it means it is this much sensitive. But then compared to another thermometer, which shows zero degree here and only expands to this much when one degree changes. So it means this one is more and this one is less sensitive. Do you guys understand this? So what does the span mean? Like the arrows? It means how with the length. If you're only talking about the length, right? So yeah. what I think is, there could be two types of thermometer. Let's suppose you buy a thermometer. And that thermometer shows when one degree changes, it shows this much length of mercury going off, right? Right. Then another thermometer, which is of the same length, but then it shows this much of change. So it means that this one is more sensitive for the same one degree change. Right. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. 
then comes range range is defined as the difference between maximum and minimum measurable temperature so basically what it can give you at max and what it can give you at minimum you subtract them that will give you the range which is pretty simple now the most people are confused between sensitivity and responsiveness responsiveness basically is the change in temperature change in thermometric properties so change in thermometric property with respect to time so a responsive thermometer would react quickly which means it is going to show the result rather quickly than the non-responsive one do you guys understand so in sensitivity it means that how big of a change it shows for just one degree and responsiveness change uh that how quickly it shows that change understood Then linearity basically is that equal change in temperature for equal change in thermometric property, which means that one thermometer looks like this it has zero here one two three so it has the same amount of difference in each degree do you guys understand so this is a linear thermometer a non-linear would show like one and then two and then three and then four so if you see the change after every degree is getting increased so this is a non-linear okay like that all right do you guys understand everything please let me know yes sir now i just want to tell you that <clears throat> Okay, we're going to go forward for that. Just uh, write this down so we can go forward then. Okay, done. Should I go forward, please? Okay. Now, for example, in this question, it says an electrical resistance of thermistor is to be used to measure temperatures in a range of 12 to 24. Show the variation of temperature as you can see. Now, who can tell me, is this a linear thermometer or a non-linear one? It shouldn't be linear because the graph is curved, not straight. Yes, so it is a non-linear thermometer because it is not showing equal changes of thermometric property for equal change in temperature. Anyway. So state and explain the feature which shows the thermometer has sensitivity that varies with temperature. Now, what exactly is sensitivity? We learned that sensitivity, can somebody please repeat the definition for that? So I know you guys are listening. The change in thermodynamic property per unit change in temperature. I read it though. Yeah. So it means we are finding the change in this property 
over the change in the temperature. Do you guys think that what that might be? What is change in R over change in T in this graph? Can you please tell me that? Gradient. That is the gradient. Very good. So it means that in this graph, the gradient of the graph shows the sensitivity. All right, do you guys understand this? Yes, sir. Now, how does the sensitivity changes? This is the second point. If you notice, the line is a curve. So every point, the gradient of the line is changing, no? Because the tangents are like getting flatter. So we are going to say that the sensitivity is decreasing as the gradient is reducing, or we can also say that it is not constant. Do you guys understand? By just by looking at this. Okay, please have a look at it. Let me know if you have a question. Okay. No, sir, no questions. Okay, very good. All right. Then, uh, then they say in the next part, it says at one particular temperature, the resistance of thermistor is 240 plus minus 20. Determine the temperature in Kelvin to appropriate number of uh, decimal places. Now, what you want to do is you want to find 2040. And I think, what is this? This would be 2100, right? This will be 220, 40, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna to touch this point, and then I'm gonna go right to this. And that is, I think, 14 point- Exactly 15 degrees Celsius, exactly 15. Exactly 15? Yeah. Exactly okay. 15. So then appropriate number of decimal places, the moment they say this, you're just gonna say, uh, 273 plus 0.15 plus what is this? So it's a plus minus 20 K. We don't have to take that in the temperature. No. Yeah. Not really. That just there to uh, confuse you. That's it. Okay. Okay. What you get then? 288.15. Uh, what? 288.15. 288.15. All right. Now, the thing is that appropriate numbers, you can just uh, write it like this. Or... Uh, you can basically um, convert it to at least one decimal place. So you can write it as 288.2. That would be fine. All right. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. I forgot to copy the answer. I'm sorry to answer space, but that would be this. Should write it now. And uh, put it up. Anyway. Okay. Let me get a password. Okay. In the next sort of question, and this is the question where we are going to remember our, oh, probably you guys have done this already, but if this is an IGCSC question, okay. One of the things that you guys need to remember is this formula. Whatever property at a certain degree theta is you subtract it from the property at zero degrees over 
the property at 100 minus this, and then multiply by 100 degrees Celsius. This will give you temperature in degrees Celsius. This is a formula that we learned back in our IGCSC. I hope you guys have done it too. All right. In the books, they were written as with probably length, because in IG, IGCSC, we only used to learn about length or resistance. That's it. So let me know if you remember this one. OK. And probably you guys don't remember this. This is very good, very you know, satisfying to know. But anyway, let's have a look. So what you're going to do is you, you see that it says the resistance of thermistor is 0 at 3, and at 100, it is 190. When the thermistor is placed in water at a particular constant temperature, the resistance is 2300. Assuming that the uh, resistance of thermometer lin varies linearly. Now, if you read this, this formula is for only linear thermometers. Just remember this, okay? For nonlinear, we have to use the graph. Anyway, so first of all, at zero, it means property at zero degree was 3840 ohms. Property at 100 degree was 190 ohms. Do you guys understand what I'm doing? And property at a certain degree theta was 2300 ohms. Okay. And now it wants us to find the temperature at this point. So I'm going to put this into the formula. It's going to be 2300 minus 3840 divided by. 190 minus 3840, and I'm going to multiply this by 100 degrees Celsius. So, can you guys please help me find the answer? 42.2. 42.2? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it is going to be 42 degrees Celsius. Who did not get it? Please let me know. Okay. All right, Tanjim and uh, Munib, Nadia, Bahar, Arsalan, Aman, Mokshid, do you understand everything? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, it was uh, fairly yes, easy. Sir. Okay, it is fairly easy. Thank you. Amazai. Now, the real issue is that we have studied that thermistor is non-linear. That's what we have studied, right? And in this part, it says the temperature of water as measured on thermodynamic scale is 286 kelvins. By reference to what is meant by thermodynamic temperature scale, comment on your answer in I. Okay, so now if this comes up, okay, so we should understand that certain questions like this will have a particular answer that you guys need to uh, write. Let me just tell you why. If you understand that this is 42 degrees and 42 degrees, if you add 273 into it, so that would be what? 315. 315, which is quite different from the actual thermodynamic scale, which is independent of this property. Okay. Now, for this particular answer, we should always remember that we have to write the thermodynamic scale. is basically does not depend on thermometric property, all right? And this is the reason that uh, temperature scales are calibrated assuming 
a linear change okay of the property with temperature however in this one you should understand that term uh, thermistor is a non linear thermometer uh, with respect to temperature that's that's the reality of it right now how does it affect that's what we need to understand you see why do we do this because when you're looking at a thermodynamic scale or temperature you should understand that let's go this is what we're looking at so temperature and sorry property and temperature so we only look at the fixed points like upper or lower like 100 and zero that we have done here which basically means that the property is changing linearly like that right and because it follows kelvin scale we should understand at only fixed points they meet so if let's suppose a linear thermometer is calibrated and a non-linear thermometer we don't know so this is that deep uh, scale so in actual it changes like this right so it's changing like this let's suppose so it's meeting at two points at zero degree and 100 degree right but overall there could be like at different points at different property there could be a different set of temperature and that's what we're with, witnessing here do you guys understand this so for any thermometer we take upper and lower fixed point as our uh, fixed points and then we calibrate it linearly and that is the reason that there would be a change when compared to an actual thermodynamic temperature scale all right is that clear any any questions please let me know okay so they'll always meet on the two fixed points right yeah 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 that's okay. true that's true that's the beauty of it okay okay now should we go forward i don't know sir i think the other students have chemistry i believe sorry chemistry i think the other students have by uh, chemistry yeah yeah i understand that's why the last one you're going to do is homework okay cool and that would be it then. So I will see you people in the next class then. And please also submit it by only one question I've given. So please submit this by uh, Sunday as well. See you. Bye. Have a nice day. Uh, sir, how bye. are we supposed to access the previous lectures for ideal gases? Based, the video lectures you're talking about, right? Yeah, the previous ones for ideal gases. Yes, uh, I'm going to upload it in just, I think, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, page 21 to page 27. Uh, the recorded lectures as well for ideal gases, right? Yeah. Yeah, recorded lectures yeah. for ideal gas. The two, Only yes. For, yeah. All right. Other PDFs are accessible now. So yes, yeah. Right. Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go to your chemistry class. Bye. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Right. See you. Bye, sir. Bye. Sir, cross rule kya hota hai? Hmm? Cross rule. Cross rule? Yeah. Aisa tu kabhi suna hai kuch ne? Sir, I don't know. I was solving a paper five. And then uh, for the question one, 
it said that um, adjust the hall probe to obtain overall maximum ah. reading. You have to use cross rule. Cross fields. It says cross rule. What is that? What is the uh, spelling of it? Cross rule. Spelling, Gati, 